And we are live. We are here with the first episode of the Friendly Cannabis Show. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We've got some fun guests, some awesome uses for the plant that we love. Um, we kind of celebrate the trichomes. We kind of celebrate the buds and the flower and the concentrates and all the cool things we could do with it. But the story doesn't end there. It's a lot more you could do with the plant. And I've got two awesome people who have unique uses for the plant. So that's why we're here today. I want to talk to them. We're going to share with you guys how you can kind of maximize your return off of the plants that we love to grow. So let's start up here in the corner. I don't know how it's looking here. Um, Manny, how are you doing today? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey everyone, uh, I am Manny from Bud and Lather. And uh, first of all, let me just say thank you for allowing me to join you folks here on the Future Cannabis Project. I'm so honored to to be fo uh, to just be here with you folks and forwarding the conversation on cannabis and sharing the knowledge and experience that I have with the rest of the cannabis community. I really appreciate everything you folks are doing here on this channel. Just just forwarding the pool of knowledge for everyone to share and to, to move forward and progress in cannabis. So um, what I do is I make soaps. I make full spectrum hemp infused and cannabis infused soap. That's my specialty. I make a couple other things too, but that's what I'm truly passionate about. That's awesome. And we were going to get into that because I have a lot of questions. Uh, that's not something that I've ever done myself. So it'll be fun to kind of hear about the process and some of the uh, the trial and error. I'll, we'll let you make the mistake so we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, there have been a few along the way. But you know what? You know, one of the things that I learned about the cannabis industry is keeping really detailed batch journals and being like just following that scientific method keeping really elaborate logs and details and journals of everything has really helped me to improve, uh, in improve and hone my craft and really grow as a soap maker and a person too. Yeah. Those, I mean, word to the wise, it, it, you know, it builds in discipline, which we can use in all aspects of our life, but oh man, nobody's memory is perfect. And when you're doing so many little nuances to, or details to these things, note taking is important so i'm really glad that you mentioned that i encourage that especially now in many places that it is legal um taking notes doesn't increase your jail sentence anymore so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a good thing yeah <laughs> and, and and you know being being uh you know you taking notes and using a lot of numbers marge i will I want you to introduce yourself here real quick, but I'll ask you one of the common rookie mistakes that I've made when trying to properly dose edibles. Right. Have you ever misplaced the decimal point? <laughs> uh, well, yes, I have, and actually not that long ago. So let's see. Oh boy! <laughs> well, please you know? let, let yeah let everybody uh, tell tell us about yourself, please, real quick. Well, okay, yeah. Before I get into all the, the <laughs> mistakes that I've made, uh, I'm Marge, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm the host of Bite Me, the show about edibles, a podcast that you can find wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, and I'm also a panel member on the High on Homegrown podcast as well. So I am uh, obviously really into making edibles. I haven't really done any soaps yet. I've done, I've done a couple of topicals and stuff, but soaps is a whole other world that I've never gotten into. But I would wholeheartedly agree on the note taking, even as a hobby edibles maker, because you think you'll remember the ratios or whatever you did. And then you go back next time, you're like, what the fuck was I doing? You just <laughs> don't. So you have to write the stuff down and you don't remember stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Very, very important. Very yeah. important to do. <laughs> yeah. That's a pro tip right there. Now from three people on the show saying take that. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yep. And the craziest thing too is sometimes when we think, um, you know, I mean, at, at first when I'd like have my little grow journals and stuff, I try and like hide my own mistakes from myself and write down what I wish I had done instead of what I've actually done. No, man. Like. Be honest with yourself in right. your note taking because there's so much that can be learned just from the mistakes or things that you didn't think about at the time or whatever. Um, you know what I mean? There's there's crazy, just yeah. There's so much that can be learned just from taking notes and being honest with yourself in your own note taking. 
And you're not going to be able to learn from your mistakes unless you're honest about them and you acknowledge them and stuff. Right. <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, the, the past is kind of what we've learned from. There's a lot more information now. But um, I remember in the beginning, and I, I'm guessing both of you might have done this too, um, weed brownies, man. Let's make some weed brownies. <laughs> you get the leaves, you get some buds, you get whatever you can, and you throw it in the mix and you bake it. You got like bud sticking out like sticking out, leaves sticking out, out. <laughs> yeah right. yeah oh man yeah yeah <laughs> so the very first batch of brownies is always like that it seems to be oh yeah we always call them like the the mama brownies it's a throwback to uh, uh eddie murphy talking about the mama burger it's got like the onion hanging out the side the red pepper <laughs> hanging out the side it's like these right. are mama brownies <laughs> yeah but that was, you know, that was way before we were taking notes and knowing things like decarboxylation. Um, that's something that I will let you take, Marge. Can you maybe mm -hmm. tell us, you know, what it is or why we do it and maybe what, how you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So decarboxylation or decarbing, as we like to say in the biz, <laughs> uh, is basically the process of activating your plant material so that it's so that you're activating the THC. Uh, when you light that joint, you're doing that by putting fire to the plant and you're doing the same thing before you're baking. And if you skip that step, which a lot of people do, then you're kind of probably wasting your plant material a little bit because it's not nearly gonna, it's not gonna be nearly as potent as it would be otherwise. So the easiest way to do it for most people when they're getting started is just to put it in the oven on a tray. You don't necessarily have to grind it up or anything. And I'm typically using like, like shake and trim, that kind of thing. You can use bud if you want, but I find a lot of the times edibles will turn out pretty potent without using your precious <laughs> flour. So, yes. and if you're growing, you're probably gonna have a lot of shake and trim kicking around. You're like, otherwise, what would you do with it? Compost it maybe? Don't compost it, use it. Um, yes. But yeah, you can just put it in the oven on a tray about 30 minutes. And I've heard some new science that would suggest 265 in your oven Okay. ideally a convection oven is <laughs> the ideal temperature um, of course you can play around with that a little bit the only drawback to the decarb process is the smell it stinks mm. so just be forewarned i do tend to do like a like a bigger batch when i'm doing it just so i don't have to do it like too often because like my house will literally reek of toasted weed yes. so it's something to be mindful <laughs> of if you have like you know, nosy neighbors or a roommate, or you're in a place where it's not legal. Uh, those are things to be mindful of. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a pretty simple process, but it's a necessary process. Sort of like, you know, you get your trim is decarb and fuse and bake or whatever. Those are like your three crucial steps, but it starts with the decarb. Yeah. Yes. And I just wanted to toss out there that, you know, there's so much time that we're, uh, sometimes we can get multiple uses out of the same material. Like when I lived in Hawaii, like the cost of living was so high that what I would do is I would take my leftover revape after I'd vape yes. stuff in the volcano. Yes. Yes. It's already been vaporized in the process. It's decarbed. Just, yep, perfectly decarbed. And I'd already gotten high from it, but I could still get some pretty good brownies and cookies from the leftover uh, revape and stuff. So right. you know, sometimes you can get multiple uses out of the same material. Yeah, so anybody who's using like a dry herb vaporizer, don't throw away that stuff you take out of it when it's done because you'll notice it's like toasty brown. That's what it looks like when you take it out of the oven pretty much. Yep. So it is decarb and then you can throw it in whatever you want and use it and it's ready to go. So if you're a smoker, don't think you have to like toss that stuff away. Yeah. You can use it. It's still good. Oh, that's such an excellent point. I'm glad that yeah. you brought that up, Manny. Uh, my wife uh, does that too. Uh, she has, um, oh, I forget the name of it. It's not a not the volcano it's it's the other one um <laughs> but she does she she keeps all that and uh one of her friends is a cook in seattle and we just you know every time we'll go out there we'll bring him a bag and he makes some very good food with it right yeah. <laughs> which is awesome yeah and and that's interesting too the, the new science you know 265 i've kind of heard you know, like 220 to 240. Uh, I've heard, you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. Yes. So, I, and I'm not just making this up. <laughs> I got, I have, having a guest coming on my show, the, so this is maybe a bit of a spoiler alert, but um, 
Chef Brandon Allen of the Tricom Institute. He does a course over at the Tricom Institute called Cooking with Cannabis. And that was his, what he learned through some different, I forget exactly what science he was citing, but they were doing studies on sort of like the ideal temperature. So, I mean, you do have to play around with it a little bit just because oven temperatures do tend to be notoriously <laughs> inaccurate. Yes. So, you know, 265, that's why he does recommend a convection oven. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you don't have one of those, you kind of have to just make do with what you have. But at the end of the day, I, I mean, if it's a little less activated than it would be otherwise, it's still going to get you fucked up in the end. So, you know what, just work with what you've got. That's what I say. Yeah. 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 And it's good that it's kind of a, see, there we go. Man, he's yeah. got the bag going. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's something that you can continue to reuse and it's kind of like humidity or temperature. We all know exactly what it should be set to. Right. Sometimes we hit it. Not always. Yeah. We're usually in that range. We're in the zone. Right. We're in the. Yeah. Now, and the, for people that are interested too, if they have the budget, there is a device called, I don't know if either of you have heard of the Ardent. Um, mm. I guess it's just called the Arden, but it's like this tall purple device that just sits on your countertop and it decarbs for you. Okay. And the one thing I really like about it is it's a very precise temperature and the way that it decarbs it's, I find that the material is more activated and therefore more potent when I'm using it from my personal experience. Um, and there's very little smell. So for people who are concerned about the smell, it's worth checking, like looking into and you can use it to infuse as well. You can't do like big batches of infusions, but you can use it for, you know, doing coconut oil or butter, that kind of thing in it too, so. Also, you mentioned that it's purple, right? I mean, yeah. like, you know, everything in the cannabis industry, if it's purple, it's better. Just try right. my purple soap. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's true. We were actually, uh, we kind of had a little back conversation. Um, oh, real quick, here's, here's that device though. Yeah. Now, Arden. I think that's the older model, possibly, but okay. it's fantastic. I really, I find it is very effective. And that's nice that it keeps the smell down. And again, I'm glad you mentioned that because the first time I decarboxed in on a cookie sheet with my ground yes. weed in the oven, whoo, if you're right. in an apartment or like you said, nosy neighbors, yeah. um, cook some bacon. I don't know. I don't <laughs> there, even there's, think there's that would help. I don't think bacon helps at all. Now I have had somebody tell me to take, like to put your stuff in a jar, like a big mason jar and put a foil lid on it. It helps contain the smell a little bit. I've never tried it myself, cool. but it sounds like that might be something worth trying if you are worried about the smell, because it will stick around for a little while too. It's not just like you open the door and it all goes out the door. Right. Your house is going to smell for, or your place is going to smell for a little See, bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think it smells good. Oh, I do too. But yeah. Yeah. Not everybody that I live with agrees with me, so. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to bring this up to you, Manny, um, because we know that decarboxylating helps us turn that THCA into the psychoactive THC because uh -huh. we're ingesting it and we're getting it through our body. Now, yeah. applying things to the skin is, is it works a little bit different. Is, de is decarbing something that you do in the soap making process? Yes, um, because part of it's just habit, because I was an edible maker first and foremost for about 15 years, and then I just fell in love with the soap making and stuff. So I will decarb my bud the same way. I'll infuse it in a crock pot with cooking oils the same way. You know, old school, simple food infusions. Um, yeah, same same way. But now nowadays, actually, I've found that uh, if I want like a more broad spectrum with as many different cannabinoids as possible mm -hmm. i'll decarb about half of my material in a big infusion like a big i i use like a turkey roaster crock pot i think those are the best ones you can use for big amounts those adjustable temperature steel stain uh stainless steel basin turkey roaster crock pots for the uh, cooking oil infusions and uh yeah i'll i'll decarb about half of it so if i'm doing like five pounds at a time maybe two three pounds in the oven and then two three pounds right into the um right into the oil or maybe just for a, a shorter duration in the oven but I, I i i use those same windows too those same temp windows depending right between 230 and 265 
I will say that not all ovens are created uh-huh. equally. So one oven's 230 <laughs> is another oven's 265. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that golden yeah. window is somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm old school too. Sometimes I'm just, I tell by the smell of it when I think it's ready. Oh, I can smell mm-hmm. burnt popcorn. All right, now we'll pull it out of the <laughs> oven and break it up and stuff. Um, not by like how long it's been. You know what I mean? Like, are you going to put two pounds in the oven for the same amount of time as you put five pounds? Right. Maybe not. So yeah. I, um, yeah, there's a lot of different factors that grow into uh, that go into it, but I utilize uh, pretty much the same decarbo decarboxylation methods. Okay. Well, that's interesting to know. Um, that's you know, again, not having made soap, I'm like, well, that's usually the first step in things. Does it apply soap making? And it sounds like it does. Yeah, it does. Uh, Okay, and I'm just picturing too, you know, because you're right, all ovens are not the same. Uh, I'm just picturing a big cola with a turkey thing stuck in a turkey <laughs> thermometer. Right. right. Now. <laughs> uh, uh, that that won't work though. <laughs> no. So, you know, we we're talking about one of the big things is reusing or using as much of the plant as we can. Um, you know, maybe do you, you guys can each, or each of you let me know, is there a p- preferred part of the plant? Do you, you know, sugar leaf just as good as a trichome bud? Like, I don't know, where where does it start there for you, Marge? Well, for me, I'm just usually using, uh, and I'm not, I've never been like a professional edibles maker. This is just sort of like a passion of mine, but um, I'm using the trim. Usually I don't use bud. I, I probably have in the past, but so few times because I find it's just the best way to use stuff that you probably toss away anyway. And you're trimming your bud and all that sugar leaf has trichomes on it. So, and you end up with a pile of it and yeah. I would otherwise be, you know, taking it out for the compost or something like that. And why waste it? <laughs> Amen to that. I'm yeah. sitting here. I got a five gallon bucket next to me of trim. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I'm waiting to, waiting yeah. for some bubble hash. That's cool. Yeah. 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 And for me, about, it kind of yeah. depends. I would say that it kind of depends on the situation and how much material I have. If it's just my stuff, there's like a tier of priorities and stuff. Like my top buds, my best colas, that all is going to. Whatever I cherry pick, whatever the trophy nicest ones, of course, that's going to be head stash. The next nicest ones are going to be like um, hash, you know what I mean? Put it into some bubble hash. Or if I've got sick family, then we make that into RSO. Everything mm-hmm. else is like soap making and stuff. And then if we want to make topicals, that's what we use the roots for. Because the oh, roots, okay. not, a, not a lot of people know that, but the roots themselves are really, really high in CBG. Okay. Oh, like, yeah, oh yeah. I did not I know that. Stuff tested and like just with root material, root infused material, and it was like significantly high in CBG. Really? So, uh, yeah. Every every part of your plant can be used. You know what I mean? Even like the if the stalks are big enough, I've had some big stalks that were like as big as my forearm and stuff <laughs> from some of the bigger full season plant. I mean, I'm not very strong and my forearm's not very big, but still, like, still. if your stocks are as big as your forearm, you, like, hack them into a couple of pieces and you can infuse that, too. You know what I mean? Like, peel off the outer bark layer and that's, there's CBG and there's cannabinoids in that, too. Every part of the plant can be used. So, I mean, like, if you're using roots, because I've, I've never heard that before, I find that interesting. So, if you're using it for, like, how would you use roots specifically? Like this is when the plant's done, you're pulling it out of the dirt. You've got this root system here right. and you can use that for CBG dominant. Um, I like to make topicals with that. I mean, like, <clears throat> um, as far as infusing different oils with plant material, some of them are just easier to work with because of the viscosity of them. Mm-hmm. So, um, coconut oil is really, really beneficial and it's great to work with for edibles and for that stuff. But if you're trying to infuse coconut oil with just straight up flour, you're going to lose so much of that oil just being clogged up in your flour material and stuff too. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the harvest, when you've got your plants, clean them out really thoroughly, dry them out a little bit, get all the dirt and wash all that stuff off. And then you still can just put them in a crock pot and simmer them for like, a day, half 12 to 24 hours in uh, in a crock pot with some coconut oil. And you'll get a pretty decent amount of um, CBG into your coconut oil just from that. Huh. 
That is yep. so fascinating. I'm writing this down, people. So you should be doing that. <laughs> wow, I'm so stoked. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, I'm honored to be, a part of, to be a part of the conversation and just be yeah. considered part of the industry. You know what I mean? Right. Um, be, um, counted as an equal among my peers. <laughs> so, I mean, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered that you would take notes from anything I have to say. Well, honestly, this is why I like doing these types of things because you always learn something new from somebody. And then you're just adding to your own repertoire of knowledge that you can therefore go and share with somebody else. So. Oh yeah. yeah. So thank you for that. Sure. I'm going to try that out. Yep. And, and what a cool thing for me too, is like, I, you know, I've, I've made basic edibles in the past. Um, I'm not much of a cook myself, but I'm like, yeah, if I do this, this, and this, it'll put you on the moon. So I've done it. Um, but, uh, hearing some of the similarities between the two is really interesting for me because I'm like, Oh, I kind of, okay. I know already that. So it's like, I'm seeing how far maybe down the road I am to starting something new as well. It's nice when it all merges together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've I've got a question for you, Marge. Um, you you're discussing all these infusions and decarbing. Uh, I'm getting the impression that you still do old school flour infused edibles. Yeah, not- for the most part, I do because I'm doing right. them like. Uh, my show is more geared to home cooks who are making edibles. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I am co- like experimenting a little bit with concentrates because I know a lot of chefs that really like concentrates just for the precision of dosing. Yeah. Um, as I'm sure you know from making edibles for 15 years, that that precision is important when you're like hosting dinners or making them for the public or whatever. <laughs> but for myself, it's it is the old school flower yeah. infusions for sure. Yeah. To tell you the truth, I've always been a fan and i still to this day am a fan of the old school flower infusions and you know i mean i've had some discussions with other edible makers and other creators and stuff you know in the process of people extracting the cannabinoids into isolates and distillates and so on they rupture the lipid layer and they just isolate and get that one cannabinoid. Oh, I want the THC. Mm-hmm. There you go. I think that they're really missing out on so many other things that are there in that lipid layer. Right. Um, you know what I mean? Like, and you can, I mean, you if you start with some really dank material, you can make some really dank, straight up just flower edibles. It all depends on the material that you start with. Right. And yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's why I kind of. I mean, people are like, oh, well, you make CBD soap or whatever. I don't make CBD soap. I make full spectrum soap. I keep it old school, and they've got the full spectrum of, like, man, like, some of these cannabinoids I haven't even heard from until I saw them (laughs) show up on my test results, man. Right. I never heard of CBL. Okay, that's a new one for me, too. Yeah. (laughs) I never heard of CBL, but it's in my most recent batch of soap. Right. I I wonder if we're going to run out of alphabet by the time we discover them all. (laughs) Yeah. Pretty pretty soon probably, you know what I mean? Now they've got like THCO and THCV, C B D V C B D V and C B D V A and the precursor or whatever, but there's so many new cannabinoids that they're just now discovering and noticing and stuff. And I think some of them are only really found in those small, minute amounts. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe they're, they're bound up with the other cannabinoids. And a lot of times people aren't getting them because they're isolating just the THC or the Delta 9 or the CBG or the CBN. And they're missing out on everything else that comes along with it. And so they don't get like the, like, you know, the entourage effect from all the terpenes mm-hmm. and stuff to determine it. Um, I think it's like a symphony. I, you know yeah. what I mean? Where, if you just get one, like just THC by itself, it's like a piano or CBD by itself. It's a, it's like a violin. You can play a beautiful song with it, but it's not it's it's not an orchestra, and you can, yeah. you'll never be able to, to to play a symphony without a complete orchestra, without all of the the parts together. Mm-hmm. And I do see why people use concentrates in their edibles, especially if you're doing it on a more professional level. But a lot of people who are cooking at home to make edibles for themselves, you know. Concentrates means you either have to go through the process of making them, which is a little more complicated and can be dangerous if you're not careful, or you have to go to a dispensary and buy them, which is adding to your cost. And you already have beautiful plant material that you can use that you've grown in your own backyard, maybe, or something like that, or you know somebody who grew it. So, you know, I do like the old school way too. I think it's a little more accessible sometimes for a lot of people, especially if they're just starting out. Yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Because again, we're, we're using a lot of the material that we would consider waste. Mm -hmm. We're now finding a new way to, to kind of use it. And, you know, you were mentioned earlier, <laughs> the, the test of, you know, kind of the temperature for decarbing, uh, you know, a new science on it it's exciting because a lot of these new things are going to come out too. And, you know, the new cannabinoids and new terpenes because they're there. We just don't know what we're looking for. We don't know how to look at them yet. So as, as the budgets increase and the interests increase, that's, that's one benefit of big pharma actually being involved kind of mm -hmm. in the cannabis space, you know, like it or not, they're right. going, they've got the machines and the budget to, to kind of discover these things which yeah. trickles down to us and benefits us kind of in the end. So that is one kind of positive. Um, so I kind of wanted to get back to you too. Uh, you know, Marge, you said you're using trim uh, and Manny, you kind of a little bit of everything there. How important is curing for each of you? Like, do you take the same curing process with your trim as you would with your head stash or does it just go in a jar and it's ready when it's ready? I don't know. I guess we could start with you, Marge. Um, and maybe if you haven't cured it, if you've noticed a difference and what the difference was. I, I'm not sure that I would notice because a lot of the trim I wouldn't worry about curing. I would make sure it's dry, but I wouldn't okay. necessarily go through a whole curing process. And when I say trim, I should specify I am using like a lot of the popcorn buds and like the little, you know, the little buds that are too much of a pain in the ass to trim right they're so small anyway so you know there is some of that getting in there too but i'm usually just making sure that it's dry before i go ahead and and decarb it i haven't actually tried to cure it in that traditional sense yet so i don't know if that would make a difference or not right okay i don't know if you can answer that question manny well, I, was whether... just, I was wondering if it made a difference like in the taste uh at all if there was like a chlorophyll so yeah oh, don't, I mean, you don't got taste your so yeah. yeah that's right some popcorn yeah. buds it's all it's all that leafy just like sugar leaf stuff yeah. but this this is all gonna go for a bubble run here soon right nice. yeah so that's a nice bucket full of, of plant material right there so it still smells so yeah. good <laughs> just yeah i'm gonna sit here um, for the rest of the episode yeah. <laughs> Sucks. uh i think it all depends um honestly I, I, I try to be resourceful and, and you work with what you got and sometimes creativity kind of takes hold of you and you got some weird new idea that um, that that just kind of jumps in and works out to the better without you realizing it. Like you just right. mentioned that you're going to run that for some bubble and stuff, yeah? Yeah. Um, I just traded some soap. Uh, I traded some high THC soap for some high THC trim to run some bubble of my own. It was just really nice, dank indoor, and it was so dark purple that it turned the water purple. Oh, wow. So all of that leftover runoff water from that bubble hash, I actually popped that into my freezer, and I'm going to use that as a partial water replacement, and I'm going to make soap with that, too. Oh, cool. So, I mean, wow. like, personally, if it's my stuff, my stuff doesn't usually get made into soap because now I'm making soap in such big quantities, and I'm making... Um, soap that's kind of like we're, we're we're trying to run a legit legal business so we have to have soap that's below the legal thc thresholds and it's been um right uh that's been tested and stuff like had the compliance testing and then the potency testing and so that's specific material that we work with oh mm. is that the phytol batch right there oh if i get it to focus focus I like, is that yeah. a wax seal on it i like that wax seal yes there that's we so nice. go. So that's, yeah, that's the phytol. Yeah, that's the green tea cobble batch right there. Yep. And it says total cannabinoids, 600 milligrams. So let's just for anybody watching who is not familiar maybe with topicals or soaps, am I going to get high if I use this in the shower? <laughs> <laughs> trick question, right? No. That is a tricky question and stuff. Like, is it going to get you high stoned? No. Um, am I legally allowed to say that it gives any other effect except for a scrubby clean feeling? No. Yes. Do I personally use it for my own pain relief? You damn right I do. Um, there's a certain way to do it though. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like if you just hop in the shower, grab the bar of soap and rub it on your armpits and then hop right out, then it, it's not really going to do much for you. But if you like, uh, if you like methodically, 
take a really hot steaming shower, use really hot water to open up all of your pores, yep. turn off the water, use a washcloth to fully lather yourself, cover your whole body in lather, let it sit for 20 seconds, then rinse it off with really hot water again. Bro, you're going to be fucking glowing. Like, you're going to feel <laughs> the glow. <laughs> like, you you just gave you know the the like secret recipe away as far as how to do it but opening the pores the hot water opening the pores yeah. this was something um the manager at the rec shop i worked for i was gonna get a bath bomb uh and she's you know kind of like told me okay well this is how you have to do it so, you know you had a little bit more detail there and i'm like oh big uh, difference no, I, I got to go back to the whole entourage effect thing with the bath bomb and tell you that a bath bomb doesn't even compare to what I make. A right. Bath, yeah. I mean, like a bath bomb, somebody sprinkled some CBD isolate into their bath bomb mix right. and they got some white powder and they added that. And in my strongly held opinion, when you separated that far to CBD isolate or whatever, mm -hmm. and like it just, it does not retain the full bioavailability. I hear that. And it, um, because you do, you lose things along the process. It's unavoidable. It's inevitable trace min or trace amounts, mm -hmm. but you can't say anything is full spectrum anymore. Once you've taken these away, even if you do recombine. So yeah, I, yeah, again, I'm a big flower fan. Anybody who's watched the shows knows I, I love my flower. I'm not terribly into the concentrates. They're cool. They're fine. Go for it. Um, but it's different for me. I get a different effect and, and I really yeah. do attribute it to that full spectrum. So, yeah, the, there, there's something in the full spectrum and all of them working together. Um, and you know what I mean? Like it's in the lipid layer. Soap itself is a lipid. Soap yep. is a lipid. Uh. That's like at the most chemical basic point on the molecular level, soap is a liquid and we're just doing direct infusions. You know what I mean? We're doing direct infusions of the flower right into that oil and then we're soaping with that oil we're not putting it any other process besides just bang bang so i mean i, I don't really think that we lose a lot in the process because of that and mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. um, and i, I yeah, like you chad i do find that i like flour better and a nice way to sort of make that comparison is i used to work in a dispensary so i try a lot of the vape carts for the 510 mm -hmm. thread batteries and a lot of those are made with like a distillate or, or something like that and the high for those is so much different. It just sort of like gets you really high really fast and then you come down really quickly. And it's just a completely different experience than, than smoking flour or vaping it or however you enjoy it. But yeah, so I, I'm with you there on the flour versus, you know, vapes and stuff like that. And here's, here's kind of an interesting question before I forget and keep moving on. There's been a few good questions. I've starred some, so I'll bring them up too at the end. Um, but the question from Evol024, that's 420 love backwards. I see what you did there. <laughs> um, when when somebody would so come in. effective for as oil for pain or arthritis. Yeah, because some people would come in, when they would come into the store and say, you know, I want a lotion or a soap or something other than an inhalable product for my pain, I always kind of classify it like, okay, is it a muscle pain? Is it a bone pain? Is mm -hmm. it a tissue pain? Um, and so that kind of pre-qualifies this question a little bit more. But yeah, it's, uh, the question is, is the soap as effective as oil for pain or arthritis? I will be honest with you and say that for my severe arthritis that I have in my knees, I um, I probably don't take as many dabs per day, but I still dab all day long and smoke flour all day long and use soap and ointment all day long. I think that it's great to work. Um, I, you know what? I, I think that oil and smoking things for direct and edibles, I think mm -hmm. edibles and smoking together is going to be more effective for inside joint pain relief. But I think that the um, it's my personal opinion that the soap would help. Um, and definitely use soap together with ointment. Like mm -hmm. wash yourself, open up your pores with the soap, and then put whatever, put your favorite kind of ointment on top of that right after. 
They're not going to mm-hmm. cancel each other out. It's just going to you're going to get double the benefit. I like that. That's the good good way to answer that too. Again, we're all a slightly different as far as the endocannabinoid system. Um but it is good to hear people's experiences because if I hear, you know, something working for somebody, I might try it myself just to, you know, hear as well. And this is completely random. It has nothing to do with the conversation. Mm-hmm. I love the song and uh, Huey Lewis and the News kicked ass. So let's just say sports was the best album ever. All right. Thank you, Weedus. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, in my personal experiences, in, at least, I found that using some things just complement each other. Mm. Like when I take edibles and I smoke, the edibles last longer and the high from the stone, uh, like the stone from smoking lasts longer. Like they, they complement each other and work together better than they would separately. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Sometimes it's just trial and problem. error too. It's a little bit of trial and error to see what's going to work best for you. And sometimes it's seeing what combinations of things will work best for you as well. Yeah. So, it, I mean, just try it out and see what works. Take notes. Yeah, yeah take <laughs> notes. I've yeah. heard that somewhere before. Yeah, I don't know, it but come up yeah. somewhere. <laughs> take some notes. Well, I, I want to ask you, Marge. Um, you know, Manny uh, had mentioned the coconut oil. Uh, mm-hmm. he, he likes using that. There's a few different things that people will use. Sometimes people will use butter. People will use coconut oil. I've even had like glycerin uh, for kind of like tincture extractions instead of alcohol. Well, you um, need a wide range. You need a mix of oils. I don't, I don't ever yeah. make just pure coconut oil. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, is one easier than the other for kind of the purposes of what you're doing and, and you know, uh, to, to both of you? Um, I feel personally coconut oil is probably my go-to because I okay. find it's very versatile when you're just cooking edibles at home for yourself. Um, it can be used in a, a wide range of different type of recipes. So, and I've heard that, you know, if it's infused into coconut oil, it's a little more bioavailable. I haven't really actually seen any hard science on that, but I'd like to think that it's true because that's what I use. But I've done butter. You could do MCT oil, avocado oil. Um, I did duck fat not that long ago. Salt, (laughs) sugar, alcohol. Glycerin is the only one I actually haven't done yet. Um, But you can infuse almost almost any fat. And sometimes it's just a matter, though, of um, like how how you're going to use it. Because I've also infused things like uh, heavy cream. But if you don't have something specific you want to use that cream for, it's pretty, you know, it's not going to last in your fridge forever. Like coconut oil has at least a decent shelf life. But I'd make a white sauce (laughs) with the cream. Yeah. But that's the kind of thing. That's like a specialty thing where you'd be like using it for something specific where I can make a coconut oil and be like, well, I'll make a batch of cookies today. And the next week I'm going to try something completely different. So it's, it's the versatility that I like for that. But again, olive oil any of those things can also be infused well that, yeah. that's good that you hit on shelf life too because yeah oftentimes when we do have a bucket of trim like this uh there's no way i'm making that many cookies yeah. uh so shelf yeah. life is kind of important uh, so that's that's a good tip there it, it kind of too to shelf life um uh, you know manny like we we've got some here i'll put, put another one up here um what, what is the shelf life on a product like is this? Is it stable? How do I, you know, Well, you know, that it? really goes back to the question that you just asked and the specific oils that you use. It really, uh, the different oils that you use are going to give you a different acid profile of different acids that are in those mm-hmm. oils, like palmitic acid, stearic acid, linoleic acid, linoleic acid, um, oleic acid, ricinol. Um, and, a, and, a, and a few other ones. So to it make sounds like an organic sense, soil conversation. <laughs> no, 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 no same joking. thing. I mean, it's just as uh, the chemistry to it is just as complicated, if not more. Um, so to make a really good soap that has a long shelf life, you want to make sure that the scores of your linoleic acid and lino, linoleic and linoleic acid are less than have a value of less than 14. Um the shelf life on the bar soaps the scent for the ones that we put a scent in the essential oils uh the because we use essential oils and not any fragrance oils or perfumes Mm. the essential oil scent might fade away a little bit over the course of a few months other than that 
as long as we keep the proper oil and acid profiles uh, calculated correctly, the, the, the shelf life, um, the longer it sits and cures, the better it gets. It has an indefinite okay. shelf life. Okay. Kind of almost like a concrete. It just keeps getting better with time. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. The longer it sits, the, the more it'll be a harder, longer lasting bar. I mean, you let it sit another eight weeks, it'll last you twice as long. Um, it might not smell as strong, but um, a lot of those soaps that we make, I will be honest, they don't really have very strong smells to them just because sometimes we have patients that have sensitive noses and scents and um, we don't we don't use any fake perfumes or fragrances or anything like that. We'll use a couple all natural essential oils and that's it. And, yeah. And, and I want to say that is a huge uh-huh. deal. Like that's, um, you know, so that's something that my wife, my wife basically like squealed with joy when they showed up and I showed her <laughs> she's for, for one, I mean, she's very, um, particular oh about the ingredients. I that was her standing over your shoulder. <laughs> oh no, that's, that's Bob. <laughs> that's Bob. He's, he's wearing my obey bag from Amsterdam. It's, it's not an apron. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the middle of reshuffling, uh, my room and stuff right now, <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, when these came, uh, the, the letters are too small for the camera to pick up here, but the ingredient list one, uh, she was very happy with because she looks at those ingredients. She has sensitive skin. These are all things that she will and can use, but to your scent, the, the perfume, um, scent, these are, they smell good, but they're not like overly heavy, which would have been a turnoff to her. So I'm glad that you've done things. It's like, they seem very natural is what I'm trying to say. In a, is that the patchouli okay. lemongrass banana that you're holding? Yes, mm. this is this what one. This one smells freaking phenomenal. They all have yeah. so, sort of a smell. This one, I'm getting the lemongrass, though. I'm definitely yeah, that's, smelling. Yeah, uh, half patchouli uh, essential oil and half lemongrass essential oil. And then I used fresh bananas. Um, I mixed in fresh bananas with the soap batter and stuff to give it like a more creamy lather. Okay, yep. Yeah, but Okay, I see banana, shea, butter hemp seed oil and uh jeff uh jeff p i call him mr toilet uh he knows why <laughs> uh he, he was asking about hemp oil earlier is that something uh that's part uh, of the process yes i've never use, oh sorry go ahead oh, i use hemp seed oil but usually only in small amounts as a soap maker there's kind of like a they're tr- they're trade secrets so you kind of have to learn along the way but certain oils, you just learn that, okay, well, you can only use this much of this oil or this much of that oil. I use hemp seed oil in every single batch. Um, hemp seed oil, but only about 5%. If you use any more than 8 or 10%, then your, uh, your soap gets like too slimy and soft. Okay. Castor oil, same thing. It's a really, really great thing for the lather, but you can't use more than 6 or 8%, or it's just way, uh, way too... Uh, Slimy. Coconut oil, excellent. Goes in all of my soap. Great stuff, but you don't want to use more than 20 or 25%. Great for uh, increasing lather and great for adding hardness to your bar, but more than 25% and it's going to be way too drying on your skin. Um, you know what I mean? And so I've had to, you know what I mean, learn all of these things along the way and from yeah. other soap makers and stuff. And it actually cost me a whole lot more to make the soap because... I mean, one thing that I learned from other people in the cannabis industry is that we need to be good stewards of the earth and we need to be conscious about the things that we're using. So I make vegan soaps. I don't use any um, animal fat or lard or tallow, but I also don't use any palm oil because palm oil is just so, so harmful for the environment, the way that they're mass producing those palm, um, palm dates and stuff. So we don't use palm oil, but we still have to try and find a source for the palmitic acid that the palm oil provides. That's why we use such a high amount of shea butter and cocoa butter. Wow. So I hope that answered your question. Yes, we use hemp seed oil in every batch. Um, small, small amounts, but that just kind of paints a picture of a little bit of the complexity and the trial and error that would have to go into something like dialing this down, especially with something like cannabis, which is a substance that, traditionally isn't used in in the soap making process oh yeah no i've got so much flat from other seed ma- uh, soap makers just trying to get the basics of learning how to make soap and all of them are just like 
shunning me and like, oh, well, you're just a hustler that's trying to hustle people and it'd be more effective in an ointment or a lotion or make something else with it. Don't make soap. It's not going to work. And I'm like, I can't put bananas or avocados or <laughs> apples or pears in lotion. I, no. I like making soap. It's I can be creative. I'm not, I can't pour a can of beer in your lip balm. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's an opportunity to ask, you know, why or how do you know this as well? Because again, a lot of this is new. We're discovering it uh, exactly. daily. So when somebody so adamantly comes at me, it's got to be better at this. You can't do that. Respectfully, why? What, what right. makes you say that? What? Well, like you were saying earlier too, like, you know, open up your pores, turn the hot water on really warm or like, like when you're in the shower or whatever, and it can be just as effective, like you were saying, as using a topical of some kind. So, yeah, you know? yeah, no, I mean, I, I actually emailed and contacted the scientist, the chemist that wrote the book on soap, like the okay. science, the chemistry of soap booking. You could buy his book, but he was really kind of dismissive too. He was saying that it's only for label, uh, CBD soap is only for label appeal. And I was trying to explain to him the entourage effect and bioavailability and how all the cannabinoids work together and stuff. And he was just like, well, it'd be more effective in a lotion. Just go make a lotion. And that's not my area of expertise, so I can't give you an endorsement. I'm like, right. I don't want your endorsement. I want to have a scientific <laughs> conversation and see what the molecule looks like or something. And, and the, By the and way, the, I don't make lotion either. Right. And the, and the funny kind of part to me hearing that is like the person says, well, use a lotion because it's better than soap. What do you do with soap? You put it on the skin. What do you do with lotion? You put it on the skin. Exactly. Well, where's, where's, so where's the difference? <laughs> Well, there's actually a big difference. And, okay. and you know what I mean? After I started making soap and learned what lotion was made from, I stopped using lotion. We don't use lotion anymore, anywhere at all in our house, our home, in our skincare regimen. Any form of lotion is bad. I don't Do not either. Use lotion. Well, that I make, sounds scary. Yeah. I don't use lotion don't either. Use lotion. No. Don't use lotion. Don't yeah. use any kind of lotion ever. Mm. Use wow. Any lotion. Do you, well, I mean, like, do you know how mayonnaise is made? Mayonnaise. You take some no. water and you take some oil and you stir it really well with some spices. That's, lotion is made the same way. You take some water and you take some oil and you stir it really well with, like, your favorite fragrance or perfume. Huh. But mo what most people don't realize is that lotion, because of its water content, means that it will not stay shelf stable without the use of a preservative. And right. almost all of these preservatives are like formaldehyde based. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, skincare regimen, I'm absorbing this all <laughs> into my skin. You're rubbing formaldehyde into yourself. You know, you're rubbing formaldehyde or some other kind of toxin because you can't make a shelf stable lotion without using formaldehyde or some other kind of like phenonip or paraffin or some other kind of like toxic preservative to um to make it not a host for like salmonella and e coli and stuff right no that's very true the that's good stuff. I, make, I make my own body butter for that reason i just use yeah. like a body well, there's know, no water body in that oil yeah. and body butters yeah. and all kinds of oil based things but i just don't put water in it and mix it right. into a lotion because then yeah. it's not shelf stable right and then it also like what people also don't think about it sometimes it's not just the lotion they're like oh what, what's the big deal i put this on like once a day or once a every couple of days but then you know there's also what's in your body wash what's in your shampoo what's in your deodorant what's in all this stuff you're putting on your body all the time and your skin is your largest organ too right exactly. so it's all the effect of all the different products we're using and when you start to think about how many products you have in your washroom um, as a woman, well, it can be really a lot sometimes. <laughs> here's what's really yeah. going to blow your mind. Why did they change the name? Why do they call it body wash, body bar? Because it's not soap. Legally, they had this court wow. case where he can't put soap on the label unless it's traditionally made with lye. Okay. Right? Okay. That's okay. actually what's going to kill the bacteria is the saponified oils. But there's so much stuff that people buy and they think they're washing themselves and it's all natural. Oh, yeah, this body wash, this men's scrub, yeah. this daily wash, this liquid stuff, detergent. It's detergent. It's not soap. Mm -hmm. And all of those things, because of the water content in them, 
they're not able to make those shelves stable without the same kinds of preservatives and formaldehyde right. and similar products too. And they're, you know, what I mean? um, and it was only legally that they had this big court case and they passed the law where you can't put soap on the label unless it's actually traditional soap made with lye. That's and then the other thing I want to mention too is you were talking earlier about being good stewards of our planet Earth. If all those mm -hmm. products come in plastic bottles, cross the recycling, hopefully they might get recycled, but we all know that most of it doesn't. Yeah. So it just creates also a lot of garbage on top of not being that good for you either. So. Yeah. Another yeah. another excellent point. And I'm glad that we've kind of steered this direction towards, you know, kind of the, the impacts that we have on the earth, but also the potential health benefits of what we're doing. Because I've got a question here from Chilbert UK, who uh, might recognize March uh, over from uh, <laughs> the high on homegrown. Um, but he makes a great point in a question. And then I'm going to ask you a question after this which is dealing with exactly what he's saying we shouldn't be doing, uh, but I'm curious anyways. So I want, I want to put this up here because it's, it's a great question. Um, he says, should we be using cannabis to promote healthy eating versus eating gummies, candy, sugar, drinks, etc.? Because that really is the majority of edibles you see uh, in a store. It's going to be a cookie. It's going to be a chocolate. It's going to be a drink, a gummy. Um, how can we maybe move past that, Marge? Or how can we think differently? to uh well, to tackle that as far as making your own edibles the one thing i do like if you are making something sweeter you can you control pretty much everything that's going in that dish or that baked good or whatever so i tend to use more organic fair trade ingredients or things that have lesser impact on the earth or you know just the best quality ingredients that i can afford because i'm eating them I do like to infuse them because I do have a sweet tooth and I find that uh, if it's infused, I'll eat one cookie instead of like, you know, <laughs> five or six. So there's that. So it's yeah. a, a little bit of forced portion control, but then you can infuse so many other things. Like I just did a couple of uh, episodes for my show where I did chimichurri and an apple pepper slaw. And those are made with like fresh ingredients, very healthy and edibles don't have to be just the traditional brownies or candy, things like that, sugary drinks. Right, because that's that's what we commonly think of. And I'm going to put up that chimichurri sauce here. Uh, you, you were going to say something there, though, Manny? Yeah, I just wanted to toss out there from, from what I know. I mean, I've heard this from other doctors that I've conversed with that were cannabis-friendly doctors. And it's not really talked about a lot in the... Um, in the cannabis community from what I see, but if you can invest in like a $40 vegetable juicer and you have your own plants growing outside organically that you're not spraying any chemicals or pesticides or anything like that on, the most beneficial way to ingest cannabis is by just juicing fresh cannabis in a vegetable juicer with some other raw vegetables. Like, um, one of the best that I've ever had is just like straight up cannabis, apple, and carrot. Cannabis, apple, carrot juice. Oh, gosh. I mean, I could feel it within like five, ten minutes. I was so energized. I mean, like, dang. I mean, like, I mean, I'm a fat old gimp and I can barely walk. But I had some energy. I almost could do a jumping jack. I could almost do one jumping jack. <laughs> could almost do one. Almost. Oh, and the thing yeah. about that, too, is you could probably take your fresh cannabis leaves and the other ingredients you're talking about, the, the carrot and the apple, yeah. and do some batches and then maybe freeze it as well. So you have it Ooh. at a later time. I don't know if you could or not. I've never tried that. But just I personally only have fresh cannabis leaves on hand when I'm harvesting. But maybe that's one way to sort of preserve it for another time is you can enjoy the benefits of it at a later date, not have to just consume it all in one sitting. Well, I mean, like we're at the beginning of the grow season right now. And I know some of us, not everyone, but some of us that have like that are able to live in climates where we're legally able to grow and we can grow plants outside in our backyard or wherever our designated garden is full sun. A lot of times throughout the season, we'll trim down and thin out the yeah. lower levels and the lower leaves just to increase the airflow and stuff. Sometimes people will take clones and stuff from that. But a lot of times... What happens with all those leaves, all those lowers, yeah. all of that stuff that you just thinned out your plant with? What are you going to do with that material? I mean, if it's clean, juice it by all mm -hmm. means. Do something with it. I mean, like, 
yeah, use it as a top dressing, compost, but do something with it. Don't throw it away. Don't put it in your yard waste receptacle. And it's so rich. And um, that was a great uh, question that our friend Q. I'm sorry, I can't see any of the questions. Uh, it was Chilbert. <laughs> yes, Chilbert UK. Line, line. And I'm not sure if we answered the question or not. But... Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and it, we, we definitely got there because it, it was like, how can we use these infusions in healthier dishes? Right. Um, because again, once we, once you get it into that coconut oil form, nothing says you have to make chocolate. You can make whatever. Almost anything. Calls for, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and do you measure it like a one to one? You know, if it says, you know, three quarter sticks of butter, do you add still three quarter stick uh, equivalent of the coconut oil? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes a ratio, I mean, it depends. I recommend people, like if they find that that full three quarters cup is going to be too strong, uh, as an outcome, you can always do some non-infused and some infused. Like you don't have to necessarily go the whole way, depending on your personal tolerance. I've, yeah. I've got another question for Marge. Mm -hmm. When you're cooking and making your oil-based edibles and stuff, do you add any other um, ingredients like Say if you're cooking with butter, do you add ghee to increase the fat content or making other edibles? Do you also add binders like sun, liquid sunflower lecithin to help I have done, bioavailability yeah. and stuff? I have done this, uh, the uh, lecithin, the sunflower lecithin in particular. I don't tend to use soy, but um, I, haven't added, I haven't added ghee to butter. I haven't fused ghee, but I've never uh -huh. added it to butter to add the fat content. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I like to blend yeah. those two together. Ghee and right. butter is real good in it. Yeah. With the other stuff I like to do, like the liquid sunflower lecithin. I don't like yeah. the lecithin granules, but no. I find the liquid lecithin real easy to work with. Yeah, and I don't do it all the time because sometimes I just forget or whatever. But yeah, I have, I do have it in my cupboard and I do try and remember to use it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, and I want to ask you guys, there, I mean, may not be an answer or to this. Um, it may be more complex than we know. Um, but Marge, to you, um, how do you keep the cannabis taste out of the food? And then to Manny, how do you keep the cannabis smell out of the soap? <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll start with you, Marge. But yeah, I'm curious for both of you, because again, a good edible to me, I would never know there's cannabis right. in it. Because again, going back to the mama's brownie, you knew there was cannabis yeah. in it. But when you're uh, talking about that mama's brownie, that's like putting the weed right in the mix. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's it's gonna be harder to hide the taste. I find once you've decarbed it and put it into an infusion, and then you put it into a recipe. I don't really find that there is a strong taste typically. Okay. In my experience. Cause, yeah. Cause I still, maybe it's the way that I'm doing it. Um, I still get a little bit of the taste in the coconut oil itself, mm. but then I guess maybe one step further when you're blending it with other foods, you're cooking right. it again, maybe yeah. that kind of shit. And a lot it. of those flavors too, if you're worried about taste, if you just make like something that has a strong flavor, that's going to hide it a bit more or mask it. Like I think like a ginger snap cookie that's so right. like heavy in the ginger flavor you're not gonna really notice the cannabis taste but i don't find my edibles really taste like weed or maybe i just find that i don't mind the taste so i don't notice it <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, and, and how about you manny how do you how do you kind of manage the the scents is it is it similar in the you know just in the material that you're using to extract the the cannabinoids or how does that work for you yeah you know to be honest the I soaps that i make it, it kind of just I wouldn't say that there's a really strong cannabis smell to them, and I don't really do anything no. in particular to get this cannabis oh, smell out good. of them. But it makes me wonder, um, you know what I mean? There's, there's certain varieties out there that the smell is just so pronounced, like a lemon skunk or a super mm -hmm. lemon haze or something like that, where you might, you might get a little bit, but... To be honest, it's it's the same way with most of the other herbs that you infuse in these cooking oils and then you soap with them, like lemon balm or spearmint. I've done infusions with those too, mm -hmm. and the smell doesn't really follow through from those very much either. Sometimes just a really faint amount. So it, it's just part of the natural process. I'd say the same thing about the coloring too. The coloring is what's more pronounced is some some of the soaps turn like a really really deep purple and then sometimes on its own it just kind of fades to pink okay. and that's like the the anthocyanins and some of those other compounds they kind of just do what they want did you get did i send you one of the right. purple discs i want them to see 
So, yeah, if everybody can see how deep purple that is. Yeah, that's nice. That is really purple. That's just that's just from the hemp's anthocyanin. I didn't do anything to make it turn purple. Wow. That's the same the same compounds, the anthocyanin that turns the hemp uh, cannabis purple in cold temperatures and stuff. That's that's what did that. That's crazy. So that's like the purple water you were talking about when yeah. you're washing. It's just yeah. Wow. And 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 you had mentioned too. You thought maybe there's a little bit more medicinal with the anthocyanins, possibly. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. I believe there's a lot of other. That's just my personal. I'm not making any medical claims. Right. No, like, you can't. Like, <laughs> my it's my personal belief and opinion that some of the other beneficial compounds are there and retain and retain their uh, av- bioavailability um, with this simple kind of inf- uh, infusion methods that we do. And I just want to say, I don't think this one will show up if it does, because it's got the cover on it, but it looks like there's like a crocodile eye mold or like a dragon's mm. eye. It's the yeah, take eye it out of the mold. It's, got it's a dragon's eye. You can unwrap it, man. All right. it's like a, I just didn't want it to get damaged in shipping and stuff, but yeah, I totally take it out. That's a it looks dragon's cool. eye piece that I did for you. Oh, I'm still on the big screen, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying it. I'm playing with my toys down here, folks. This feels <laughs> like Christmas and somebody's opening up their present. Again. Yeah. He said, unwrap it, unwrap it. Sure, I'll unwrap it happily. Uh, but yeah, now we could probably see it. Oh, yeah, oh, that's definitely. Cool. Yeah. That's uh, freaking cool, though, huh? Look at that. It's the dragon eye. That's badass, dude. And this is the, again, the purples kind of natural uh yeah, the natural yes. purple on that yep yep that's so cool that, that turned purple on its own i wish i could take credit for that but that's the the that's but you know what I mean? that was one of the things that i learned taking notes and including different amounts of the hemp infusions and stuff like oh wow you have these certain oils in there and you exclude those other ingredients it'll turn purple but some other things <laughs> kind of just have some other ingredients will are more dominant you know what i mean like that that speckled white with black spots all mm-hmm. banana milk turns like that you know what i mean so no matter how much hemp you got in there it's going to do that same thing with the orange brown from the carrot soap okay we have uh let's see a couple questions here from chat uh we're talking about mct or, or yeah mct uh space cowboy was asking um to use it in uh and then stang man's talking about some food application so i've heard about it um in food is is it also used in in the soap making as well um specifically mct oil i don't use that specific oil but only for one reason there's nothing wrong with that oil mct oil is really great i love that stuff I use it personally and I fill like empty gel caps with it and I just like buy gel caps uh, or I just eat that's um, edibles. If I want to make sugar free edibles, I'll fill them with infused MCT oil and um, I'll, I'll use um, infused MCT oil for my personal gel caps. But as far as making soap with MCT oil, my policy is to not that's one of the only that's one of the blacklist don't do not use. But it's only because I have every single batch of soap potency (laughs) tested. And when the guys are using the mass spectrometer machine to do the potency testing on the batches, there's something about the viscosity of the MCT oil that makes it messy for them. And it's Mm. hard for them to to mix it. It makes a mess. You just you you just created the perfect segue for me for my next question for Marge because you mentioned viscosity and you mentioned messy Marge I don't know how to ask this question but <laughs> I've heard if you use a little too much MCT oil in your food it can almost act as a laxative. Uh, oh, well, you know is what? There, is there any people, truth to that or it can. <laughs> When people aren't accustomed to MCT oil, it can cause some gastrointestinal distress. Okay. So you are sometimes better off using smaller amounts initially if you're if you're not used to using it. So that is something to be cognizant of. I've never had an issue with it myself, but if you've never used it before, you might want to yeah. start slow. But <laughs> in case of emergency, if you do use too much MCT oil and you have an accident, 
That's what our soap is for. It's very <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. That is awesome, dude. I talk about segues. I thought I had a good segue, dude. Manny just nailed it. And here's the yeah, stag man. It's got a little more information for us. Uh, yeah, it's different uh, in the body. Bypasses the digestive process straight to the liver. It can use the energy or stores fats. Um, yeah, man, I remember there's just the story of a customer that came back into the shop after buying the MCT oil, uh, different vials, and he had a story for me. So that's <laughs> why I wanted to make sure to ask. Yeah, and that's something that's <laughs> worth bringing up too, because if you're buying like CBD oils and stuff in dispensaries, a lot of them are made usually with CBD or sorry, with MCT oil as the sort of carrier oil. So it is worth if you know you have issues, you've never used MCT oil before, that you should be aware of that that is a thing because a lot okay. of them are mixed with MCT oil. Oops. And and have you um, played around? I always say messed around with that's such a professional <laughs> word. Um, do, do you also make uh, tinctures or have you experimented? That's the word, experimented yes. with making yes, tinctures at all? Yes, and, I have and, experimented with tinctures a little bit, um, infusing alcohol and then also trying to make concentrates. I will need to make some new concentrates soon. I actually did an episode on my show not that long ago with Temple Grower, who some people may know from the High on Homegrown podcast as well. And you can find him on YouTube as well. And he does that for a living. He makes a lot of concentrates himself. So he came on my show and we talked about that at length, about making your own concentrates, which there are some, you know, caveats involved with that you want to make sure you're doing it safely so <laughs> yes. i have experimented a little bit with it yeah yeah okay cool because i you know in the past i that's a beautiful thing sometimes about when you have you know the medical license or you're doing a home grow um you know it, it all stays in house and sometimes you have extra you don't know what to do with it like this bucket you know I, i'll make hash oil but it gives you the opportunity to experiment. It gives you the opportunity to mess up without mm -hmm. really detracting from the amount of medicine you have for yourself. Right. So that's kind of a beautiful, beautiful part. Um, and we've got a question here in chat as well. Um, I am a Crohn's patient. Let me put this up. I'll get to the, the end of the question here real quick. Um, there we go. Okay. Crohn patient found that suppositories work well, which are actually a pos popular item. Um, if you guys think about everything that needs to cross like the blood brain barrier, that's a very um, easy place to for absorption. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so lacking on words today. <laughs> Can you tell this is the first show I've done for a right. while? <laughs> I've been in Amsterdam for too long, damn it. Um, but, oh, back to the question. That's right, we're doing a show here. Um, he was hoping not to need to store them in the freezer. And I understand that because a lot of things, particularly MCT oil is going to change at room temperature versus mm -hmm. when it is uh, cooler, even coconut oil. I know on a like hot day, like an 80, 90 degree day here, the top layer of my coconut oil is, is a little bit different. Is there anything uh, that a person could use that's stable at kind of room temperature or really do these type of, uh, pills or form need to be refrigerated. And that's for both of you to, to uh, answer. To be completely honest, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's perfect. I've never really experimented with suppositories, but it sounds like if you want something to stay at liquid temperature and shelf stable, MCT oil sounds like it might be an ideal application for that. But okay. you might know better than I would, Manny. Uh, yeah, I mean, the only... Um suggestion that i've got if you wanted a shelf stable suppository that you don't want to have to store in the freezer i would say infuse your selected oil to your desired ratio and get a box of the disposable orange syringe uh, oral syringes that are like mm -hmm. one milliliter a piece and just like definitely single use only throw away when you're done and don't try and reuse them but you can you know what i mean um Fill up yeah. those syringes with your oil and then like uh, use a little bit of medicated uh, coconut oil or whatever as a kind of to lube up the area to insert it with the syringe. But I've 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 done like RSO suppositories mm -hmm. just straight injecting with those oral syringes. 
Just yeah. make sure you get the, the smallest gauge you can get. Right. <laughs> it's not the, it's the one milliliter, the one ml, or five ml, not the... It's yeah. just the one ML, the, the smallest <laughs> gauge you can get. Seriously, seriously, Jesus was was on the right path. He said probably a turkey baster and direct squirts. Um, yes, but don't go one, for the right? turkey baster. If that's your if that's your cup of tea, then just put some extra extra medicated coconut oil in there because it works as a great lube to increase orgasms. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, have some fun with it. I'm not going to kink shame you. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 sold uh yeah we sold um everything suppositories uh ones for females uh, to help with cramps mm -hmm. um, we also sold lubricant at the store and yeah the yeah they yeah, sound no, funny until the... you until you like need them use them and they work for you you're like right. this is this is a miracle which yeah. is oh, yeah, why yeah. a lot of us love cannabis in the first place yeah. so <laughs> there's yeah. a um there's like a full spectrum oral um sublingual that i'll make for friends and family and stuff and like two or three different family members have got severe uh endometriosis with severe cramps and that kind of stuff and they mm -hmm. said just doing like the the sublingual is the best relief they've ever had mm -hmm. nice nice sublinguals are pretty dope too yeah sorry that's kind of on the the edibles vibe but sublinguals are a real good way to do um sugar-free edibles too and i've confirmed with a couple different dentists that dropping stuff under your tongue you got the blood vessels that are like right mm -hmm. under there so that's like almost yep. instantaneous access to your bloodstream right so faster absorption faster onset basically yeah. yeah yeah so now that now that we've kind of covered some of the healthier ways that we can use uh <laughs> this in cooking um we had the question earlier in chat and i wish i could bring it up but it, it reminded me of a problem that i had when i was making i was trying to make um lollipops or like a hard candy and you have to do it at a particular temperature i used butter and basically as soon as i like kind of poured it into the molds the butter just kind of separated the hard candy didn't it was yeah. a mess what I... what could i have done differently there not use butter. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have found because I've done them with coconut oil as well, and they always I find they always separate. And this is where your fico, your RSO, your concentrates work really well for candy making specifically, because you just don't have that problem. So that's what I would do is not use the butter or the coconut oil in those cases. They just don't sort of emulsify properly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A little trade secret that was shared with me kind of recently was um, like taking a concentrate like RSO or some activated decarboxylated dabs or shatter or whatever. And you you just dilute that down with like a shot glass worth full of Everclear. Mm. And you mm. put that into a syringe and you just drip that down onto the gummies, let them dehydrate. And what you've got left is medicated gummies. Mm. So just buy some gummies from the store and add your infused Everclear to it. Use a dehydrator on a low temp for just a couple hours if you've got one. But if not, you can just shelf dry that. And I've tried it out a couple of times. That works pretty good too. Hmm. I would have to. I would have to give that a shot. I mentioned glycerin earlier. Um, because I, I've done uh, or created tinctures using the, the alcohol uh, and also I tried to do it with the glycerin. The glycerin didn't bind or pull the THC as much. It didn't seem as potent. Um, but, you know, my wife doesn't drink. Neither of us drink, actually. But we're both kind of sensitive to the taste. So the alcohol tinctures are something we're just like, no, we really kind of tried to avoid. Mm -hmm. um, but did you, Manny, did you get any of that or taste any of that? Or did it just really I, evaporate uh, from from it, from, from the gummies? The, from when the you, gummies? Yeah, when you put it on the gummies. Yeah, no, I, I personally, I don't drink anymore. I, I quit drinking a little over a year and a half ago. And so I try and make sure that they're fully evaporated all the way um, from any liquid before I ingest them again. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get any alcohol flavor from... Um, any alcohol smell or okay uh, well that's flavor. that's good they were pretty good because i mean like but the thing the key is you want to use everclear or something mm -hmm. that's like 99 proof yeah the high what was it grain high, alcohol no, 99 proof, like grain alcohol was like what i used alcohol. i think yeah, yeah. you want to use the the strongest alcohol that you can get not like 
vodka or anything with like a lower proof level and stuff because then it's not going to fully evaporate or do the proper job for you. Huh. Okay. I'm sorry. I was just reading an interesting comment here. Uh, I'll put that up in chat and see. I don't know. Maybe Marge, have you tried something like this? Uh, but Hillbilly Herb Grower says, my easy RSO gummy hack is he melts the gummies in the microwave. Uh, and then he mixes with a syringe of RSO, a syringe of coconut oil. And then I'm imagining it just kind of recombines and solidifies. Huh. Uh, I've never tried that, but I mean, if it sounds like it works, so. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I'd, I'd be... Uh, getting the like the super big gummy bear and watching them like melt like indiana jones and the, yeah okay <laughs> well uh and I, you know i mean i guess melting is something we don't want to do to people marge this is uh <laughs> this is yeah, common in the go. edible world yes can you maybe please explain how to calculate or at least account for dosage for people so right. nobody sends their friend to the moon and not even talking about hydrating you know start low go slow don't eat a yeah. whole bunch if you don't feel it how do we uh not give people thousand milligram cookies when we're trying to give them a hundred milligram cookie <laughs> which i've done before I, I i have like i was saying before i've done that as well um <laughs> by missing a little decimal point if you will but um yep basically i mean it can be pretty tough if you're growing your own and you're you're just using your own trim and plant material. You kind of don't always know if you haven't tested that material, how strong the, the cannabis is, but you can kind of maybe ballpark it. And if you can at least sort of get a ballpark ratio of how potent they are, you can advise whoever you're giving them to. So I do have a calculator on my website, like an edibles dosage calculator, because there's a formula that you can do to figure out the potency of your edibles based on how many cookies you have in a batch, for example. Um, and so I would suggest either doing the calculations or finding an edibles calculator online and using something like that to figure it out. And it'll give you a, a pretty decent ballpark. So if you know that the cookies you made are like 25 milligrams, you can at least tell somebody they're going to be around that. But then you can also say, here's a couple extra cookies that you can experiment with, which is what I like to do. So if someone's just, if I'm giving somebody cookies and they want, you know, half a dozen, I'll throw in a couple extra. So I can be like, they're about 25 milligrams. But if you're uncertain, cut this cookie into four or something like that, and then, you know, figure it out from there so you don't overdose yourself, um, because that that does happen. People get uh, excited, I guess, because you know they they eat something and then they're like, "Oh, these edibles ain't shit." We've all heard that before. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then they eat more, and then they're like on the ceiling or whatever, and not having a good time. The other thing I would suggest, if you're making a lot of edibles and you're giving them out to people. Um, there is a device called the tea check, which I find is pretty effective. And I've used that. I have one myself. I've used it quite a bit. I had them on my show recently, somebody from the company to talk about the nuances of using the device. And it does test. Um, they do have a, a kit that will test your flower and the infusions that you're making. And it's reasonably accurate. I've found. So I've, I like to use that. And that way I know, um, how potent my edibles are with a pretty, you know, a pretty good degree of accuracy. Where I got myself into trouble recently, as I was alluding to earlier, is that um, it, to, it the tea check gives you an answer of potency, like based in milligrams per milliliter. So, you know, okay. it might be like 5.2 milligrams per milliliter. And I don't know what I was thinking, but I calculated it as, for example, 5.2 milligrams I was thinking teaspoons, like one teaspoon, which is five milliliters, which is like a very different outcome. <laughs> and yeah, somebody got a little bit too high on something that I made after doing that. And I was just like, I can't believe I, anyway, it was, it was not one of my better moments, but we all fuck up from time to time. So that's part of the experimenting process, but <laughs> yeah, we, we yeah. do. We we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody, we get a lot of comments in the chat. My wife was so pissed. My wife doesn't trust me anymore. Oh, <laughs> boy. Yes. That yeah. decimal point. And, you know, it, it's interesting to me, too. Um, you know, one of my buddies, longtime friend, smoked together for many, many years. I start to feel it at 100 milligrams. He starts to feel it at five. Yes. And we, that's something that people yeah. don't talk about enough because a lot of a lot of folks out there think if, you know, I'm a heavy smoker, 
and I've been smoking for however many years or whatever, that that's going to translate into a tolerance for cannabis or like for ingesting it. And that's just completely untrue. I find your, your tolerance has nothing to do with height, weight, gender, or any of that stuff. It's just your innate tolerance really. Cause I've known people like tiny women who could eat like 250 milligrams. And then, right. you know, the big guy that's like on his ass after five <laughs> milligrams, right. And everything in between. So there's no shame in eating a little less and experimenting first to see where your tolerance is. Um, absolutely no shame because for anybody who's ever overdone it on edibles knows that it really sucks <laughs> actually. So yeah. it, 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 <laughs> it does. And this comment makes absolutely no sense. It sounds like a, I ate too many edibles comment. The lake is chasing me. I swear. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so things yeah. you say when you've eaten too many edibles for 200, please. Right. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Yes. I, I'm glad you did cover that too, because yeah, just because you're a champ with, you know, the, the bong uh, doesn't mean you're a champ with the cookies or whatever right. we're eating. Uh, how about you, Manny? Have you kind of found that in your experience too, the, the translation of smoking to eating with you and, and kind of your group of friends? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got a couple of friends that are like, oh yeah, dude, edibles don't work on me. I'm like, oh, all right, fine. Challenge accepted. Make them the, you know what I mean? Like you can make them whatever. And like, edibles don't seem to work. And then like some other people, I mean, I remember trying to help somebody with a pain relief capsule one time and like, I made her the first batch and they worked really well for her. And then I made a little, uh, another batch and I just added a little bit of soy lecithin as a binder. And she had like, it way overdid it for her. And she had like a terrible experience. And I, I felt horrible for it. I mean, it definitely wasn't something that I did intentionally, but right. yeah, it's, um, it's crazy sometimes with the, with the edibles. They're such a wide, and I find that personally, I find that sometimes even things like, eating edibles on a full stomach or an empty stomach mm -hmm. makes a big difference. I've, you know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah, here's a nice little dessert after we've had this big old meal. Oh yeah, that's a nice way. And then, Oh, I don't have anything in the house right now, but these medicated cookies. Oh my gosh. I've, I've done some damage on an empty stomach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My, my buddy, um, again, the, the one who we give the stuff to, he cooks, he made this batch of brownies and I was pissed that it was, actually medicated because they were so good and i wanted to eat more but i knew that i shouldn't because he also makes them ridiculously strong right so i'm just like oh, i just want another bite of bread it's one of those where you like go and keep cutting like little like half inch pieces <laughs> yeah. and... little crumbs and stuff yep. yeah and then you're edible. yeah 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 but that that's why i was saying earlier that's sort of like that built-in portion control because you're like i want to eat more but i'll be too way too high if i do just yep. force you to, to eat a more reasonable portion, I guess. Because my sweet tooth every time would happen to me. I'm like, I'll go for a second or a third piece. But yeah. It's good to see Alex Hardy in here too. He, he nails it. Liver and enzyme chemistry is what dictates a person edible response. And yeah. that's legitimately or why nice. some people really do not get affected by edibles. Yeah. Or in that's the case true. of my... Alex Hardy, thank you for sharing that. Much respect yes. to you, sir. Much respect to you in the industry. I recognize that name. So yeah, much respect, Alex Hardy. <laughs> yeah, Hardy, yeah, he, he has a show here on Saturday. Well, usually Saturdays, usually on the weekend, Paradigm Shift that he puts up. Yeah. Um, guys, check that show out. Uh, if you haven't, you're missing on some some mind opening uh, experiences. So yeah, I always, you know, I'm a fan of everything on the channel, but that's something yeah. different that you're not hearing a whole bunch of. And yeah, I think interacting with stuff. a lot of the other people here on the channel, like I'm a big fan of Mr. Toad, Mr. Toad from Boneyard NorCal. Much, much respect. Salute Mr. Toad. He's a big um, hero of mine and a good mentor. Um, big up Mr. Cheddar Bob too. Cheddar Bob, <laughs> the two cat, uh, a cool cat and Magpie. Magpie is pretty cool too. Oh yeah. I like that guy. He's, he's, he's a fellow Canadian, Marge. I don't know if, uh, Hey. We we should we should <laughs> we should yeah we should introduce you to he's he's yeah. a fun conversation man he he enjoys growing I don't know if uh, you guys are in the same area or not but he's a person who could probably have a little extra trim for your cooking needs if you oh, need it that would be awesome yeah yes yeah. I would love that yeah <laughs> yeah always need it well, well you know a lot of people um, you know early days we we always had the one friend who would cook like we'd always kind of just give the trim or whatever to them I'm like I don't want this stuff you want it why do you want it okay yeah. <laughs> we we just always called her Betty. Cross 
animatronic because she would show up. <laughs> she would show up at the club and she'd have just like a plate of cookies, a plate right. of brownies, whatever it was for the night. And you just see her and you'd be like, yeah, OK, sure. What did I eat? So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and I guess, too, you know, I'm glad that we covered dosage. I'm glad that we've covered that it affects people differently. Is there anything specific that you do, Marge, or that you should do to label your products if you're going to a potluck or if you're having people to your house and you have just yes. a plate of cookies sitting there? What is kind of the responsible way you manage that? I would, well, just label it, basically. Like I have a jar of cookies. I'll put a label on being like infused cookies. Um, just so that like my mother-in-law lives with me right now and I wouldn't want her reaching into the cookie jar and eating one because yes. she's, you know, not really into that. <laughs> right. So you just want to make sure that, and it could be like a kid or whatever the case might be, a roommate going out to work. I actually saw that happen a little while ago. They, I, somebody was living with someone and they made like a pot of stew and forgot to mention that it was infused. <laughs> and then they were at work and they're like, I'm feeling a little funny. And they realized later what had happened. So to avoid those types of things, you just have to label it. And if you're having people over, if I'm giving cookies or whatever the case might be to somebody, I always try and figure out, like, you know, with, again, within that ac reasonable accuracy, how potent I think they are. Right. With the, right. you know, the caveat to, you know, you know your tolerance best. Yeah. And if I'm saying it's 25 milligrams and you have, if you don't have a lot of experience, start low, go slow. But you just have to inform people so they're not like ingesting something that they weren't aware that they were ingesting because that's yeah. not cool. Yeah. No, no, it, <laughs> yeah. it's not. I'm definitely not down with dosing people. And we all kind of like uncomfortably chuckle when we like say it or hear about it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you've ever been on the wrong end of, of a, a, an edible, it's not it's not good. Yeah. Um, and, and even though, you know, Manny, it's it's soap isn't going to I wonder if you ate it. No, that's bad. That'd be wrong to wash somebody's mouth out. Okay, fuck oh, you, I, I, man. I, fuck you, you fucking fuck. Wash my fucking mouth out. No. Um, right. The, the, the labeling is, is going to be a little bit different for your product, and you're entering kind of the, the legal market, too, in Oregon. Do you maybe want to tell us about some of the labeling or hoops sure. that you um, have to deal with? Yeah, I actually, I, I kind of make it a point to go above and beyond what's required of me just because nice. I want to try and do right by people and do things for the right reason, do good things for the right reasons. So I'm legally required to write the word soap on the front label and have the exact weight of the bar on the front label. And on the back of the bar, I have to write my address. That's all I'm legally required to write. But I try and include a full list of ingredients on the labels and I list a full list of ingredients on the websites just because some people have soy allergies and some people have peanut allergies and some people can handle certain fragrances or perfumes. Some people can. I just I try and do right by everyone and be um, be transparent in what I'm including with all of my stuff. I mean. Most of my soaps are vegan, but we also make one that's got goat's milk. Um, but it's the best goat's milk that you can get, literally, like national champs and stuff. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, Wolverwood that's... Farms and Sayo, small little farm. She's a lady farmer. I try and, and do stuff to support other people. But yeah, back to the labeling. Um, and then we, I, I try and be pretty upfront and honest about all of our, our potency testing and lab results too. So on that soaps that I gave you, mm -hmm. on the back of the card, the test results are there on the back of the card. And it's got like a QR code with a link to the full test results. Oh, very cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, I did, it's so pretty. I didn't even want to like disturb it yet. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You totally have the... Uh, the yeah. We got the code with the QR. Uh, we got the metric compliant label with the QR code, and so I mean, we're not. I'm not part of the metric system, and I'm not required to report to metric, but I still try and have metric compliant packaging and full. Um, you know, I just full transparency. I want everyone yeah. to know everything that I put in the soap because I'm not ashamed of anything that I put in the soap. Sure. I spend extra money and on the best ingredients because. I mean, like, my soap's freaking expensive. It's 20 bucks a bar. I mean, like, but I want to make worth damn it. sure that people are getting their money's worth. If they don't, times are hard right now and money's hard to come by. If somebody's going to spend that much money on one of my bars of soap, I want to make sure they're getting their money's worth. 
Yeah. So and, I'll be honest and upfront about everything right. in there. And, and size, they, size, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Marge. Oh, I'm just going to follow up what you're saying, Manny, is if they are spending $20 on a bar of soap and they care about buying good quality products, they're looking for that information anyway. So you're just yeah. providing it to them and giving the people what they want. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm trying to scoop up that other side of the market right too right now right. With, the, with the free seed packs that we're offering. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. We got the luxury heady folks and we got the people that are looking for genetics on a budget trying to yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I mean, too, for the size and the weight that you get, I think that price is right on. I mean, granted, mm -hmm. we're, we're this isn't freaking Irish Spring, people. Right. Um, <laughs> this is something a little bit yeah. more. And actually, I don't even know what Irish Spring costs these days. Um, <laughs> well, but I... I, I was laughing earlier because I, I made a joke about, well, what if I eat it? Do I get high? You you say on here, do not eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to put that do not eat warning label because like just, you know, sometimes just for fun, I'll make, um, sometimes we made soap that looks like food. We had one that come out mm. looking like fudge. We made a Ooh. batch that looked like a uh, German chocolate cake with like the, the coconut frosting and stuff on top. You would have um, fooled me, man. That's messed up. <laughs> yeah, so that's actually, one of my that... friends is uh, one of my friends was telling me I actually put the do not drop warning label on top. Right. There there was this one and I was that's curious. The chocolate cake. Yep, that, that's the chocolate oh, cake. That's right awesome. there, man. Oh man, okay, yeah. See, I did again I it got the plastic wrap on it. Cake when I first made it. That's like a year old already, I think. Oh, it's I'm having a hard I can't get it to focus, but yeah, I was looking at this one. I'm like, well, that's a little different. What is it is a brownie it? or? <laughs> I know. What did he send me? Good stuff. That's good stuff. Thank you there. Um, and I guess I, I'm just kind of looking at my notes here because I know we've been here for an hour and a half, so we're going to try to wrap it up. I appreciate you guys. I know I said this will probably be like an hour, so I'll try okay, to uh, this has been fun. drop it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm enjoying yeah. it. Uh, yeah. Again, I have the tendency of like, yes, we'll, we'll stick to an hour. And then if I don't stop myself, it'll be three. So right. <laughs> just everybody in chat, if you guys do have some questions, please definitely toss them into ch uh, to the chat now. Um, I will be updating the show notes as well. So you all have uh, information of where to find these two. Um, I've kind of been showing the, the Instagram and their websites during this show. That will all be in the show notes. Give me probably 20 minutes after this ends. Um, but I did have one thing written down here for you, Manny. Um, we are talking about, you know, kind of using the soap. Um, and actually, I guess we could go both ways. I'll start with you, though, Manny. Um, is there, like, a preferred time of the day for application that you tend to get a better response? Is it, like, wake up in the morning? Or does it even matter? You're going to get the same thing, middle of the day, morning, nighttime, whatever. Shucks. To tell you, you know what I mean? I think... I think either way is good. I think what really makes the big difference is proper application of the soap, the way that I had mentioned it earlier in the show. You take a couple minutes with really, really nice hot water to open up your pores with all the hot water. Turn off the water. Use a washcloth to cover your body completely with lather. Let it sit for at least 15 to 20 seconds and then rinse it off again with really hot water. That's, that's the key way. That's the ticket to really getting super effective use out of the soap awesome and, and real quick too i don't know if uh his, his his radar ears came on but mr magpie is now in chat we mr. were just Bye. talking Bye. about Bye. you yeah. buddy Bye. uh but he, he says best soap on the earth hands down and his pet lines are clutch my dog loves them uh do you do pet uh pet stuff as well uh, the pet soap. We the pet soap is the one that has oh. the goat's milk from the national champions at Woven Woods Farm. It's not. We're out of stock right now, but I have a batch that's curing that should be ready in a week and a half to two weeks. Dog soap, yeah, with goat's milk. Really good stuff. Really, um, yeah. That one's that one's pretty legit. I had another friend that was down in Roseburg that I uh, he got some of it and he used some of them on his on his little mini pit that he's got. And she had like a skin condition and it just cleared that right up and it really made her, co he took a couple of pictures and her coat was like super shiny. Wow. So it made her skin feel really good. Um, yeah, I was pretty stoked on that too. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to ask him about that. If you're listening, Mr. Magpie, I'm going to DM you later. 
Um, okay. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Before I before I forget, um, I know we're wrapping things up and stuff. But yeah, you said that you had just gone to Amsterdam and stuff, right? And I remember you making a comment. I thought I'd seen you make a comment somewhere that you said that there was a cheese drought. Yeah, uh, there's not too much cheese to be found and stuff right now. Um, yeah. No, I didn't. Well, like I, I said, man, I mean, like, I'm super, I'm super stoked to have the, the, the exclusive seed packs from the collaboration that I did with Mr. Toad. That's the promo that we're running right now is uh, exclusive stuff that I did with Mr. Toad. Um, and that's the P.A. de Pato Especial. But for our next round of uh, promo seed packs, the stuff that we've got going right now, I've got a selected mail that's a U.K. cheese Uncle Fester cross, the cheddar Ooh. skunk from the yeah. Nature Farm. Okay. And he's going to be pollinating... Um, we got like a UK cheese, classic UK cheese from Red Beard, nice. uh, strawberry banana cheese from Red Beard. I got some Tosh Indian L IBL. I just popped a whole pack of Mr. Toad's government cheese, and nice. I've got like a couple other cheese crosses from Dynasty. And those are all <laughs> going to be going um, moving forward when they're when those seeds are ready. Those are all going to be gift like free gifts for everyone. Like you buy a bar of soap, you can get that seed pack. Nice, nice. That yeah, is so awesome. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to revive the cheese. I'm trying not to get it, uh, let it let it get lost to history and the annals of history or whatever. I'm I just wanted to let you know, give you an update that I'm working on that reviving those cheese genetics and getting those back out to um, um getting those back out. I'm really excited to work with Mr. Toad's government cheese, man. I popped the whole seed pack and I got like nearly 100 percent germination rates on those ones too. Those are those are pretty dang. We'll have to we'll have to uh, get together and compare some notes. I too I've picked up six or seven different companies uh, versions of cheese over from that area. Because uh -huh. um, again, everybody's looking for skunk. I've given up on skunk, uh, so I'm <laughs> moving on to cheese now. Uh, but yeah, bl uh, um, so blue blue cheese, big Buddha's blue cheese, which I love. Yeah. Uh, some Exodus cheese. Uh, I got two cheeses from greenhouse to try i've okay. never popped them so i don't know what i'm really going to get but i love that you're hunting it because hopefully maybe we find something and we share and yeah combine and it goes That'd from be there great. yeah goes yeah from no there. i mean i figure everybody else is working so hard on their hunt for the skunk right now i'm trying to revive the cheese and keep it around yep. so that we don't get to that point where it's lost and people have to try and revive it you know what i mean like mm -hmm. let's keep it around i mean it's getting rare let's keep it around before it goes extinct yep um, and and you you reminded me too there with the seed packs and the giveaways i promised to give away uh i'm going to be doing one on every episode uh as long as i'm doing them um i've got some afghani number one times the westport grape juices what? that i i just had in uh uh, it was still, it was in the flower. It was in a, a paper bag just to dry out and I'm rearranging my room and I found it. I was like, Oh yeah, nice. this bag. <laughs> so I sat there and took all the seeds out the other day and I've got a few to share with people oh, and we'll nice. be, we'll be doing that. So we're, we're going to do a giveaway here in a second, but I saw, I saw some, uh, questions in chat for you marge um one was from stang man here and it had to do with decarboxylating um see the best way to decarb flour in a jar or silicone box etc in oven at temp um and you you kind of didn't use anything uh, other than really a tray right no but i did have somebody once like recommend using a jar with the foil lid on it to help keep the smell down. That's and right, I have okay. noticed like companies, if you're familiar with like the magical butter machine, yep, yep. they are coming out with like silicone decarb boxes that you can put in, put your plant material in and put it in the oven. I'm not sure. I've never tried one, so I can't really speak to how effective they are, but okay. companies and, and are coming out with those. And the temperature range, I mean, the latest science I've heard is 265 but if you did a little less, you wouldn't want to go over 265 probably, okay. but you did a little less for about 30 minutes. That's going to be your your best bet. And then use it in whatever you want after that, honestly. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and you were using you were using mainly trim, which you kind of let dry out. Yeah. Um, do you just kind of break it up by hand before or you just throw yeah. it on wholly? I just, just, yeah. Well, I mean, it's usually like a little broken up. Well, yeah. Um, and there's like popcorn buds and stuff. I try and take out like, stocks or like you know stuff like that if there's big pieces or whatever but i don't grind it before i put it in no 
Okay, and here, uh, Hillbilly Herb Grower says, uh, the jar style works well, just open the jar outside. So <laughs> right. maybe that's the that's right. the important part. Yeah, otherwise you negate all the, all the hard work you did by keeping it covered in the oven. <laughs> yeah, right. You just, like, <laughs> you just release the smell into your kitchen. Yeah. Oh, let's let's do here. Um, oh, it's a question for Manny here. Uh, soap is U.S. only shipping. I've I've fulfilled orders to Canada and a couple other countries already. I believe Magpie was our first Canadian order, um, but there's a couple other people in Canada and uh, that we've shipped to. I believe I've sent to France. Um, yeah, we we do to other countries too. Okay. Awesome. International, international Pakalolo Kanja farmer soap man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I'll try my best to get it to you. Cool. All right. Well, that's a good question. And again, I'll have all the information um, in the in the show notes for everybody. I'm gonna go into our private chat and type two numbers because heck we're gonna have two winners today so this is how we're gonna do it um uh, unfortunately i apologize to our canadian and international viewers this has to be u.s only oh, sorry um, i know <laughs> yeah right i've already hey, had problems only contest man i'll throw down with you i'll match you on your giveaway oh, oh nice uh, so for the for each of the winners Heck yeah, you guys yeah, just... Yeah, I'll cover the shipping, man. I got you, I got you. Dude, thank you. The, the, the stakes are higher now, folks. So we've got, let's see, we've got 67 people watching. Um, why don't we just go to 200? Okay, so a couple rules because I get pissed off when people abuse the system. So <laughs> one guess, one guess. It, uh, see, we've already got a critic. Oh, wait, that's Peter. <laughs> Boo. Oh, I love you. Um, okay, so oh, he's probably doing the Canadian thing. I yeah. don't know. He was agreeing with me. Yeah, shoot. <laughs> yeah. All right, so please, guys, it's one to two hundred. Only guess once, unless somebody above you put the number. You can guess again in that case. Um, I'm a stickler for busting people, so don't try it. Which inevitably means oh, i'm gonna fucking try it um but yeah okay so when i when i hit uh in the chat when i say start we'll start this uh and yeah we're we're gonna do <clears throat> two separate winners we're gonna do uh, a 10 pack for each winner of the afghani number one times the westport grape juice and a bar of soap from bud and lather uh, for each winner. So let me get in here real quick. And you two, Marge and Manny, I've typed the number into our private chat already. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you see it fly by, let me know. Oh, but, yeah, I see it. I see well, it. I'm just going to enter start, or I'm going to hit start in there. Let's see here. Does that mean I can't guess for a free bar or so? <laughs> 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 I, I I think you may know a guy though. I think you may know I a guy. Know All right, so I've I've hit start there, and uh, we'll see if numbers start coming in quickly. But again, this is the last minute for anybody in chat to get uh, questions in for both Marge and Manny. Um, some exciting things going on, and I don't know why my chat's not going. Nobody's guessing. Nobody wants these things. I don't know how that works. Are they looking for Chad Westport to hit start? Uh oh. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Well, all maybe I can say is maybe they're looking for you to type the word "start" instead of staying. I thought you did. Oh, I did. Okay, there we go. Okay, there yeah. we go. I, I did. I hit start. Oh, now all the numbers show up. Wow. Why did that happen like that? <laughs> <laughs> We're not here too. Okay, so I'll give it. I'll give it another uh, like sixty seconds or so, and then if nobody guesses them on the head, we'll go with the closest person here. Uh, oh. See, this is why I love Peter. There's an easier way of doing this. There's a giveaway tool. Apparently, I'm not up on the stuff yet, but <laughs> I will be because we're going to be doing this each episode. We're going to be giving away some things. So let me give it another 30 seconds before we get to the number. And let's see here. 
Ooh, we've got a good question. Okay, here. I am going to go ahead and hit stop. Hammer time. I love doing that one. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to I'm going to search through for the uh, or for the numbers and find the winners, but here's a question Manny uh, in the meantime for Mr. Magpie. He says, uh, I have a question for Manny. What is your next big goal for Bud and Lather? Wow, nice. Thank you. Put you on um, the spot. Put me on a spot. My next big goal. We have just upgraded our packaging to recycle the paper and sustainable packaging. Nice. And we are in the midst of our big breeding project. Um, I think our next big goal is this breeding project mm -hmm. and trying to enter. Um, thank you for that purchase. Whoever made that purchase just now, thank you so much. Oh. The second one that awesome. I've got the live stream. So thank you both. Is, um, for supporters, you guys are going to get freebies. Um, the next big thing is I'm going to try and enter some cups. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I submitted an entry to this past year's Emerald Cup, and I'm, you know what I mean? I'm honored to even have been able to to go down there and represent and submit an entry. But for me, it kind of showed me where I stand, and well, I had a lot of room for improvement and things that I needed to sharp on sharpen up on and get better in my own packaging and craftsmanship and um yeah our next big big goal is trying to get better and then really start to hit up some cups and stuff because i believe in my product i i pour my heart and soul into this and i think that i'm making a really good thing and i'd love to see how i stand against other edible and topical creators and stuff and how i you know how i stand among my peers in the industry I mean, I'm honored just to be counted as an equal and to be called an equal among everyone else. Um, you know what I mean? Being a disabled person, sometimes we have that, I want to be equal with everyone else kind of thing. And I want to be counted among my, my heroes in this chosen industry. Um, that's, yeah, that's the next kind of big goal is is taking it to the next level with, champion, um, with, with competitions and continuing to improve with every batch, having a, a lot more genetics to offer in the free seed packs with people. That's, I hope that answered the question. It absolutely did. That's freaking awesome. And real quick for the, the chat listeners, um, Anova, um, you're outside of the U.S., correct? Will you let me know in the chat if you are outside of the U.S. or you're inside? Um, but Manny, to, to speak of goals, uh, I wanted to show this up here. So this is the Oregon leaf. Now, uh, if you live along the West Coast or even the East Coast now, you know this magazine. You've seen it in your dispensary. There's the Washington leaf, the Oregon leaf. There's the Northeast leaf. Um, check this out. Manny, right oh, cool. there, right there. <laughs> Boom, wow. Bud and Lather. This is freaking amazing article. And this is up on your, this is up on your website. So anybody can go and, and read the article, but I just had to highlight that because dude, this is a magazine I've been picking up for years. I'm, I'm truly honored. So that's cool. Kind of in shock that they chose to name me as patient of the month and kind of feature the, the story of how we did the soap fundraiser to pay for my wheelchair. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of in shock by all of it. Really, really, um, grateful for, for, where this journey has taken us it's it's really awesome and even the support that we like the friends that we've made and the support that we've had from people in the cannabis community reaching out and helping us out like mr toad with all the seed packs and um oregon leaf magazine you having us on F uh, future cannabis project um the people at the at the emerald cup letting us come down and participate in that too i've you know there's so many people um that have just gone the extra mile to make me feel welcome and equal and um counted in among my peers here in the cannabis industry i mean it shouldn't i'm almost tearing up and stuff <laughs> it, um, it, it yeah thank you so much it, it means a lot um I'm really honored and blessed to have come this far and uh as a you know what i mean just as a medical mm -hmm. medical marijuana patient you know what i mean yeah you're you're doing good stuff man and i love your attitude I love the humbleness and I know you're going to continue to go far because good vibes are infectious. Uh, mm -hmm. You tend to surround yourself with those types of people and, you know, they're motivated. They, they want good things for everybody. You know, the high tide raises all ships. So, yeah, 
Very mm-hmm. cool, man. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Real quick, the uh, announcement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the announcement for the winners. We do have two winners. Do we have a drum uh, roll or anything? Yeah, drum roll. Or... Brrr, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so I can't believe nobody picked my freaking 173, which I type into every chat at random all day long. Nobody gets 173, <laughs> but there was a 176, and I believe that went to you, Inova. Uh, you were the closest on that number. And uh, Jonathan Rice, you are our second winner. The second number was 99, and you had guessed 100. You guessed 100 a few times, but that's guessing the same number <laughs> multiple times. So that counts. And I do see your 69, but it was followed by an LOL, so that wouldn't have counted anyways. <laughs> so yes, your 100 wins because 99 was a number. Right. Um, both of you, um, Anova, Jonathan Rice, uh, if you'd like to hit me up in the DMs on Instagram, I can get your information and I can pass that to Manny uh, as well for the soap. So thank you guys for playing and we'll, we'll do that again next week. We'll be back here next Saturday too. Uh, but we're not quite done this week. I still want to talk with Marge real quick and kind of ask you, Marge, about what is the future hold for you? Um, what kind of projects are you currently doing with the podcast and the website? And where would you like to see yourself going? Well, that's a really great question. I love doing the podcast. Um, it tends to be audio only because I'm not... I don't always like being on camera, but here I am. I put you so, in the big view. There you go. Yes. They're pushing me outside of my comfort zone. So uh, I'll be continuing with that. I'm starting a new series on the podcast as well, where I'm going to be interviewing interesting people in the cannabis space that I meet along the way. I became a certified gangier last uh, November, actually. And that was amazing. And what really struck me about doing that program is that when I went to Humboldt, California to do the live training and the exam, the people that were there were like all from such like such diverse walks of life. And it was so cool to see like all these people that were all here connected because of the cannabis plant. And you had like, you know, people that were working in offices and people that were doing gorilla grows and like everything in between. It was super cool. So it really kind of got me thinking about sort of highlighting some of the these interesting people in the cannabis space. And that's one direction I'm kind of working on right now. Also because I want to maybe, you know, branch out beyond edible sometimes because I meet so many cool people through the podcast and doing things like this, but they're not always edibles people. So I want right. to be able to talk to them too. So that's uh, that's something that I'm going to be working on. And I'm just going to keep making and edibles and eating edibles and helping people educate about the wonders of them because that is one of my preferred methods of consumption. And uh, yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. Well, I, I really do appreciate both of you taking the time and giving me a little extra time today yes. uh, on top of what I asked for. It's been a blast. Uh, yeah, covered it was really some good great. Things. Yes, yeah. and I really appreciate you inviting me on the show. And it was also wonderful meeting you, Manny. We've never met before, so it was really nice cool to doing this you. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, thank you so much for having having us on here. I really am honored to, to join you, Chad, on Future Canada's project. And can't see all the names in chat, but thank you all for joining us on this live stream. I appreciate all of you um, <laughs> helping us to contribute to the conversation. You know what I mean? Like, you can just forward the count, uh, the conversation on cannabis in all forms. Right. I, I second all that. I was just laughing because I saw Greenbeard jumped in at the minute, at the last minute. And said, <laughs> I God damn, I missed it again. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Go Greenbeard. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the A for effort, but That's we do right. have replay yeah. available. So <laughs> yeah. everybody yeah. watching on replay, uh, enjoy. And everybody who came to hang out, uh, I really appreciate it. It's great seeing you guys. It's great having yes. a good, fun, positive chat. So... Oh, can I just toss this out yeah. there? If anybody out there, if you guys are trying to make your own soap and you want some mm-hmm. tips and tricks, you can feel free to hit me up. I, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going to be a jerk with my with my trade secrets and stuff and my methodology. I can only make so many hundred bars of soap and it's not enough to cover the whole country or the whole demand. If you guys want to make your own ganja and hemp soap, feel free to help me out and I will steer you in the right direction with whatever knowledge and insight that I am able to provide for you. I want well, us maybe. all to be successful together. Maybe Manny, I should have you on my show so we can just talk there about people who are into cooking anyway and then you can 
you know. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd be I'd be stoked. Yeah. That that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. That would be great. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. That would be super cool. You know, you're going to have at least one person tuning in because that guy's me. So, right. yes, I will <laughs> tune in. Many more people are tuning into this show. But, yeah, thank you guys again so much. Thank you, chat. We will be back next Saturday, same time, 2 p.m. on the West Coast, 5 on the East Coast. Uh, I have tentative plans with a top breeder from the East Coast right now. So I just need to confirm that. That will be an exciting episode as well. Thank you, Marge. Thank you, Manny. And, thanks, Todd. Uh, Appreciate it. My yeah. pleasure. I'll hit the end broadcast button here. And thanks, chat. Catch you next.